Hello everyone and welcome to another video and welcome to Marxist John, episode 6. At the end of episode 5, Celia had stopped talking to her man on Hangouts and he had just dramatically announced, Is this how you want to abandon me? That was at 6.16pm on April the 6th on Hangouts. Meanwhile, over on Facebook... He'd tried messaging her there a couple of hours earlier because she was ignoring him. I want more of your sincerity here, he said. I hate secrets. I want real love. A genuine relationship that will last forever till death will do us part. You think he might have got the point by now that she wasn't interested and moved on to someone else, wouldn't you? And God-fearing woman in my life, a passionate woman that has feelings to her soulmate because I don't play with my words in my life anymore. Celia answered him the following morning. I want your sincerity, she said, but instead you tell lie after lie after lie. I can only conclude that you don't even know the meaning of the word. And yes, you do play with words. You twist them, distort them, use them to lie and deceive. If you decide you want to tell me something that's true, such as why and where you went in Wisconsin, feel free. But I know you won't. You're too much of a lying, deceitful toe rag. Good afternoon. Why are you beating me up with your words? said our offended bully. It's okay. You don't have to go mad at me. I really doesn't know you. I don't know if you ever knows my ex-wife there. I'm so scared of women. Oh, stop bleating on about being scared of women, said Celia. You sound like a whining toddler. You sent me a random friend request. and Goodness knows how many others you've sent random requests to. Only you, he said. And remember, Celia is well acquainted with Denise, Annie, who probably comes next, and several others to follow. I'm not what you're taking me for, he said. You're too hot temper there. We're supposed to be loving each other's here. I have no intention of loving you, said Celia. If you're wanting a sincere relationship, tomorrow I'll video call you. We can make it happen if you want. I'll believe that when I see it, said Celia, because I know you won't. You'll play me a stolen video. I will want you to A. Answer a question B. Say hello Celia when I ask you to and C. Wave at me when I ask you to but you can't do that, can you? I will, he said. I promise you that. Having been smacked firmly in the face with a juicy wet fish on Facebook a man hopped back on Hangouts and continued We're supposed to be loving each other's here. Don't act like you doesn't want life partner there. Like I just said on Facebook, said Celia, I have no intention of loving you and I most definitely do not want a lying idiot like you as a life partner. Tomorrow, he said, I'll show you the real me. If you're wanting a sincere relationship, tomorrow I'll video call you. You can make it happen if you want. She doesn't, mate. Believe me, she doesn't. I will. I promise you that. He wasn't heard from on the 8th of April on either Facebook or Hangouts. On the 9th of April, on Facebook, he said, How are you doing today? Ready to do that video call? asked Celia. Tomorrow I was really busy, he said. I'm having lots of things to fix right here. You've invented time travel. Awesome, said Celia. You left me behind, he said. Oh, diddums, said Celia. Never mind, he said. You're supposed to be loving kind there. I see calling you by video calls while I'm taking risk based on my job doesn't matter to you anymore and you're a loving woman over there. You needed some change. I have absolutely no idea what that was supposed to mean. No, said Celia, you're right. It doesn't matter to me. Risk taking is the sign of a real man and I have no desire to be loving to you. Why do you think so, he said. You think being a wimp is the way to impress a lady, do you? Real men like high risk and adrenaline rushes. Pathetic wimps make pathetic excuses. You can't understand my job here, do you? He said, pathetically. No, said Celia, who was in full-on attack mode. I understand you're a journalist, and I understand that you're a pathetic wimp, and I understand that you're a liar. I will not talk to you again, unless or until you do what you promised to do, she said, copying the bit where he'd said that I'll video call you. Yes, you said that, she said. You said you'd video call me. You said you'd video call tomorrow. No, you are trying to wriggle out of it by making pathetic, 
stupid, totally unbelievable excuses. So either you do what you promised or you're blocked. I think even your lying, cowardly, pathetic brain can probably understand that. Give me your phone number, she said the following morning, so I can call you. Remember saying this? Tomorrow I'll show you the real me. Celia was hoping to get a phone number that she could share with some fellow scam baiters. Give me your phone number. I can't wait to hear your excuse. Send yours, he said. Good afternoon, my side. No, said Celia. I asked you, but I know you're too cowardly to give it to me. Oh, why not, she said. It's... and she gave him Annie's phone number. Not going to call me then, she said, the next afternoon when nothing had happened. I'll call you tomorrow, he said. Can't make calls right here. I miss you. Don't believe you, said Celia. Of course you can make calls. Don't make land calls. On duty, he said. It's not a land call. It's a mobile, said Celia. And you aren't on duty, idiot. You aren't in the army. Stop causing me here, he said. Why are you insulting me? Do you even know whom you're talking with on here? You're very rude. An insultive woman there. Oh, yes, mate. She knows who she's talking to. And you might, or might not, be about to tell her. Don't want a woman like you, he said. And he sent a threatening photo, which I've blanked out because I've promised YouTube when I uploaded this that my videos don't include that kind of content. Adding underneath, be careful. Oh, don't be ridiculous, said Celia. You're a journalist, not a gun-toting thug in the army. Shut up there, he said. And if you're trying to intimidate with a photo, added Celia, grow up, you aren't 14. You doesn't know me, he said. Call me then and stop being a coward, said Celia, because bullies are cowards who use bullying to cover up their weakness. Did I ask you for money here, he said. Who are you? Money, said Celia. WTF are you talking about? Are you confusing me with someone else? You said, I'm bullying you. For what? He asked. I doesn't even know you. I didn't. I have absolutely no idea why you're bullying me, said Celia. So stop insulting me, he said, or I'll report you in your country there. Well, there's a threat if ever there was one. If you stop making stupid, unbelievable excuses and phone me, she said. Ooh, go on. Please do. What fun. Now, just stop and think about what he said there, ladies and gentlemen, before we go on. That's the sort of threat that somebody that's scared of him or is used to giving in to bullying might take seriously. But think about what he said. Report you. Report you to who? For what? What has Celia actually done that he could report to anyone? Show me a copy of your report when you filed it, she said. Stop talking to me then, he said. And then phone me, added Celia. No worries, he said. Why would I stop talking to you? I want to see that report you're going to file, said Celia. My phone is turned on and waiting with eager anticipation for the call that I know you're too cowardly to make. Here's my number, she added, in case you've misplaced it, giving him Annie's phone number again, and adding, oh, you need to add plus four four in case you've forgotten which country you're going to report me in. Funny, he said. I'm waiting for you to call, said Celia, and to show me the report, but I know you're too much of a coward to do either. I don't like cowards and bullies. I like real men. If calling is too much like hard work, she said a bit later, try texting me instead. Imagine you can manage that even when you're on duty. What do you want from me, woman? He said. Simple, she said. Call me or text me. You asked for my number. I gave it to you. So stop being cowardly wimp and call or text me. But I know you won't. I'm beginning to wonder who you really are, because clearly you aren't a journalist. Your stories are too unbelievable for that. I'm definitely scared of you now, said our man, starting to work out what his plan B had better be. R-O-F-L, said Celia. You sounds like you knew my ex-wife somewhere around you there, he tried. You're scared of making a phone call or sending a text, said Celia. That's taking coward to a whole new level. Oh, your ex-wife needs you to phone, does she? I understand now, said Celia. You're a criminal on the run, because if you reveal your location, you're going to get arrested for not paying your ex-wife. Gotcha. OMG, he said. She stole my money and ran away. 
I was right, wasn't I, said Celia. You can't text me, because then I'll have your number and I can give it to the police. Money? Worth about $500,000, he said. <laughs> Yourself, what kind of woman are you? To which Celia replied, that's a physical impossibility. I'm one that's worked out the truth, said Celia. That's why you're being so rude, isn't it? I knew it. Just go away, he said. Scared, because I've worked out the truth, said Celia. Good for you, he said. All that crap about she stole your money. You're in hiding somewhere, aren't you? Because you've refused to pay what she's owed. Yes, he said. And you definitely aren't in Turkey, said Celia. I didn't want her any more. Not even my daughter wants her. I'm not in Turkey, he said. That's no excuse for not paying her what you owe us, said Celia. Obviously you aren't in Turkey. I've left Turkey, he tried. No, said Celia. You were never in Turkey. Where are you? She owe me, not me owing her, he said. Why not tell you? Won't tell you. I don't believe you, said Celia. If you're on the run from the police, then it can only be because you haven't paid her. Did I told you I'm running from the police, he said. What are you talking about here? You haven't said you aren't, said Celia. And if you aren't on the run from the police, why are you telling me all these lies? And who are you really? And why won't you phone me? You're too insultive there, he said. That alone's a giveaway that you aren't a journalist and never have been. You can't even spell that word, can you? Yes, he said. Journalist. Crazy. Another word you can't spell, said Celia. At least try to pretend to be something believable. Fancy, a journalist who can't even spell. Good, he said. English languages are different types, but you can understand better there. Stop talking to me now. So you have your own version of English where you just make up words, said Celia. To which our man replied, yes. Do you have your own dictionary as well, asked Celia. Go on, guess his reply. Yes, he said. And you're still too cowardly to text or phone me. What are you hiding? Hi, he said the next day. Oh, it's you, said Celia. Hi, changed your mind and decided to give me your phone number, she asked. Our man came over all contrite and felt a confession coming on, as you do. You've meet with a scammer here, he said. I'm a single father. You don't have to talk with me unless you want to know me for good and for us to meet and remarry again with a real man, both with uppercase letters here. The choice is yours. R-O-F-L, said Celia. Give me one good reason why I would want to marry a scammer. Because people married like that, he said. If there is honesty. People marry scammers, said Celia. I'll think about that one. Someone who wouldn't know honest if it smacked them in the face. Oh, added Celia, and real men, with uppercase letters, don't scam, lie and bully. I lied to you because I'm a scammer man on here, he said. But now I have to be real, in uppercase letters, with you, if you want. You're not too old, with an uppercase letter, to my liking. You're too dishonest for my liking, said Celia. As I said, real men don't lie, scam and bully. Perhaps you should get a proper job and not teach your kid that scamming is a good life choice. Thanks so much, he said. That's why I do scamming on here, because no good company's here. I'm praying for God to forgive me. So you think I'd want to marry a man who doesn't even have a conscience and will take money from vulnerable people, said Celia, despicable scum. I've been scamming people on here since two years now. Are you going to pay them back? asked Celia. In fact, it beats me how anyone could be taken in by your obvious non-American accents and your ridiculous lies, but that's life. Thanks for understanding, he said. My conditions on here is very complicated here. I don't want to waste my talent here. No good job here and no good pay to take care of my children here. What did you do before you decided to be a bully and a liar? said Celia. How old are you even and how old is your kid? I'm a welder, he said, and also a scaffolder. Those are skilled jobs, said Celia. I'm 47 years old, he added. Yes, they are skilled jobs. Could you work in car repairs if you weld? asked Celia. I don't know anything about welding. No, he said. Scaffolding job is better in a company. Is there a lot of building work? asked Celia who thought she'd at least pretend to take him seriously. Like skyscraper houses, he said. Yes. 
What we would call tower blocks, said Celia, which looks so odd now I've typed it, but that's what we call them. Yes, he said, I have strength to fix things up with you there. Maybe you should pack some sandwiches in a bag, said Celia, and go round the sites to see if you can get a job. You must have experience, which would be good. What's your real name? To which our man replied, Too stressful! Job hunting is too stressful, said Celia. And he gave her what he claims is his real name. I've blacked it out, in case it is, and in case we ever get enough against him, to report him. OK, said Celia. And when I say we, I have other scam baiters on this job. Yes, he said, not good jobs here and no good payment. That's just making excuses, said Celia. Jobs don't grow on trees in any country. You have to get out there, put in the legwork, set yourself a goal. Leave home at 8am every day for a week and spend eight hours knocking on doors, talking to building site managers till you get a job. You wanting honestly? Here I am, he said. Good night. You're fit, said Celia. You've got experience and you've got a kid who doesn't need to be taught that scamming is a good life choice. Thanks, he said. And then... Good afternoon, beautiful woman over there. How are you doing today? Followed by, please calm down. I told you everything about me already. If this is how you want to treat me, then do be it. If you're single lady there, then you've to put changes in your attitudes. I can handle you very well there. You wanting realistic here? Likewise me as well. Now I'm real with you. Yeah, you're a real pain in the backside, mate. Helping me here while you've known I'm real person here and making possibilities for us to meet in person. Don't you think that will be better instead of looking for a relationship with scammers who can't prove himself to you? I'm wanting more of your relationship and passions. You can help me out there and I'll remain forever with you till death do us depart if you want. No, she doesn't want it, mate. Trust me, she doesn't. I'm wanting a good job and I know you can help my situations here. I knew scamming people on here is not a good thing, but what to do? Please don't be mad at me. Please try to understand me better there. I'll stop bullying now. I'm a real man to you now. And if you're feeling even passingly sorry for him and thinking, oh, maybe he's about to give up scamming, dream on. There are more episodes to come. What worries me, said Celia, is how you treat your kid or kids. If you're prepared to bully your victims the way you do, and God only knows how you treat your kids, I feel really sorry for them. If you're their role model for how a man should treat a woman, there's no hope for them. You're a ghastly, evil, pathetic excuse for a man. I agreed with you. I'm sorry, he said. It's just the way life turned into. No hope. Stop making pathetic excuses, says Celia. There's only one person that's responsible for your attitude and your life choices, and that's you. You're 47, not 17. If you choose to be a pathetic, thieving bully then that tells me everything about you as a human being. It's just excuse after excuse after excuse, isn't it? You have absolutely no intention whatsoever of getting a job and teaching your kid how to lead a decent life, so stop making pathetic excuses and don't tell me you're praying to God. That's another lie. You are responsible for your choices in life, not God, and you are responsible for your pathetic excuses. You're just a wimp and a baby. Hmm, thanks, he said. And then it was Easter Sunday. And he popped up again. Good Easter Sunday evening, my side, he said. Hope you're having a peaceful moment, sir. Some people just never learn, do they? You still haven't given me your phone number, said Celia. So he gave her a phone number. Good afternoon, he said. How's your health been today? What country code? Asked Celia. African, he said. And he tried calling her. Celia answered. Hung up as soon as I answered, coward, she said. He tried again. You're a lying, thieving, cheating coward, said Celia, who refused to answer him. Why on earth do you think I want to talk to you anyway? Or are you really too thick, stupid and idiotic to understand? I'm not a coward, he said. I'm a real man, with uppercase letters here. I've told you everything about me already. You're not a real man, said Celia. Real men do not lie, cheat, thieve, steal and teach their kids. That's a good way to live. Nor do they claim to pray to God when clearly they don't even know the meaning of praying. It is based on second stances. Stop, he said. You are a coward and a criminal, said Celia. You should be in jail and I have no idea what the hell a second stances even is. Never mind, he said. You're too horrible. 
and making pathetic childish excuses does not excuse you being a criminal and a bully. I feel so sorry for your kid. If you treat him or her the same way you treated me, then God help them because you clearly won't. You doesn't even have respect at all, he said. Nothing could safely say she doesn't have any respect for you, mate. Respect, said Celia. You are kidding me, right? Respect for a criminal, a lying, cheating, thieving, bullying criminal. Are you delusional? Calm down, please, he said. What's wrong with you there? Celia swore at him and blocked him. And if you think that's the end of Marks with John, you're wrong. There are more episodes to come. He's got to encounter Annie and the new character, Samantha. I hope you enjoyed this attack on Mark Sith John. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel. Please share the video. Please comment down below and I'll see you again in episode whatever we've got up to. I think it might be episode seven. 